The WWF is going to die. I know that. The WWF has cancer. Because of Cody Rhodes. Is the slow eating kind of cancer. It's not quick. I'm not going to let AEW kill what I created. Me. The WWF is mine. It's mine. I created it. I'm not gonna let Cody Rhodes. What I created. Because I'm going to kill what I created. I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna kill my creation. I'm going to inject the WWF with a lethal dose. Of poison. If anybody's gonna kill my creation, I'm gonna do it. Well, I don't really think we need to talk about money in the bank. That summed it up, right, Bob? Um, yeah, I would I would say so. Uh wow. Yeah. Um Well, I, I was surprised. Surprise doesn't equal good. But what's up, everybody? Travis, brother Bob, uh, we're here. Uh, we don't want to be here because uh, we have to talk WWE, and it's a trash product. It's it's trash. You, like you it's, can say that again. I mean, it's, to, to be it, fair, the matches weren't bad. It just uh, the writing, like the, the <laughs> booking for the whole thing, was terrible. I mean, the matches weren't bad. The guys in the ring did a great job. All right. Well, okay, we're going to take it apart. We're obviously, we're talking about Brock Lesnar and WWE's finger poke of doom moment uh, that, that was Money in the Bank 2019. So, you're right, Bob. There was, there was some good action in the ring. The, and this is the, first, this is the first WWE anything I've watched all, all the way through. I did not watch the pre-show. I, I watched it all the way through start to finish on Monday during the day. And I was like, you know what? Money in the Bank's always, I always really enjoy those matches. Let me, let me give it a chance. I know, I know that Seth and AJ is going to be good. Uh, I might as well watch it. I've got time. Sure. I'll throw it on. If I don't like it, I'm not really losing anything. And it was, my biggest criticism going into the main event was the officials. And I don't want to bury the officials because I feel like WWE has created this environment where the rules are so inconsistent and what the officials are asked to do on a match to match basis is so different. They get confused and because, because you got to figure you got to figure that uh, the finishes for those matches, they were told in advance. If nothing else, the fi finishes, they were told how they wanted them to uh, handle the finish. So when earlier in the match, like like I'm sure you'll, you'll talk about here, um, they call a rope break. And then later on the match, they don't, or vice versa. Um, I'm sure it's because later in the match, yeah. they're told what to do. The, the 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 glaring one, the one that I, I I seriously was screaming at my screen, was the uh, Ms. Shane McMahon one. It was just so egregious, where uh, Ms. had Shane in, in the figure four, and Shane made it to the ropes, and they didn't break it because it's no disqualifications, right? There's no rope breaks. There's no DQ. It's inside a steel cage. Yet, Miz beats the crap out of Shane with the chair, hits the skull-crushing finale on the chair, and Shane puts his foot on the rope, and the refs, it's a, it's a rope break. Okay, like, I complain about the inconsistency show-to-show, show, mm -hmm. and what... But at least 
there's a week or two weeks, or even if it's in the same show, there's a couple of matches in between. This happened, what, seven minutes apart in the same match? Yep. It's, it is, it makes, it makes it look like a clown car. Mm -hmm. It makes it look like they are putting on a product where their officials who are supposed to be highly trained and are supposed to manage the match are boobs and the commentary listen man the commentary teams buried the officials yeah and and i don't know i don't know there, there's one of two things i have to assume either that was part of the show where they were planning on burying the officials and making this just a schmoz fest mm-hmm. or vince was seeing what was going on and he was in their ears he's like bury the officials right like and that doesn't make anybody look good. Why are you – the reason you have to do this and bury the officials is because you don't have rules that you enforce consistently, and it makes everybody look stupid. Absolutely. And So, Bob, yeah, uh, it wasn't just that match, though. The officiating kind of sucked all night. And, it, again, it, it all led up to this moment at, at the end – where Brock comes out and it just doesn't make any sense. So Brock's the eighth guy, but he didn't have to work the match. Well, even worse than that, you had Braun Strowman put in the match. Then you had Sami Zayn take Braun Strowman's place. And then Brock Lesnar took Sami Zayn's place. And Brock Lesnar is the guy who leaves with the briefcase. Like, even if it wasn't Brock Lesnar, and even if he didn't walk out at the very end of the match and do nothing but climb the ladder, that's still a mess. So, I mean, you add to it the fact that it is, in fact, Brock Lesnar, and he did nothing but injure a cameraman and one of the other wrestlers by knocking someone off a ladder and hitting one of the ladders into a cameraman. Um, yeah. I mean, it's still a mess, even without that being the case. I think that's the most egregious part, though, is... If you were going to put, if he was going to be the eighth guy and you put him out there and he works the match, I'm not happy with it, Mm -hmm. but I, I'm not as upset as I am. I'm upset for a very different reason. You know, I'm like, oh, it's Brock with the briefcase. I roll my eyes. I don't like the booking, but at least Brock was out there working the match. So there's, there were seven guys who went out and put on a, pretty good money in the bank ladder match and worked the butts off and took you know those bumps that are required in that sort of match Mm -hmm. especially ricochet i'm looking in ricochet's direction wow yeah uh and this guy gets to come out and spend 90 seconds in the match and win the briefcase and bury everybody else and what you're what you're basically saying is brock's gonna get another run with the title and so you're gonna get another part-time champion Yep. Okay, Vince. Great logic. Um, and you know, I I want to I want to criticize, but apparently the marks are eating this up because Raw did post its highest rating in like six weeks. Yeah, well, I think the Raw rating is where it's at because they were announcing a new championship, and a lot of people had said maybe. Oh, we think this is going to be the hardcore title coming back. It's going to be the reintroduction of the hardcore title because Mick Foley's introducing it, and we kind of got a hardcore half version light. of that. Yeah, hardcore and, light. Uh, and let, let's, uh, uh, are we going to go there and talk about that now? Is that what's up next? Well, I mean, overall, like I said, there were other, there were really bright spots on Money in the Bank. Like, um, Seth and AJ was, was good. Um, I want to see, I really want to see Joe and Ray get appropriate time to work a match. Yeah. And I it's think weird. those guys could steal a show. It's weird that they had Ray go over in a short match like that. Like, you would think that maybe, they would have let Joe go over and then maybe gave them a little bit longer match to uh, like the rematch for Ray. But it seems like WWE was, uh, I don't know, set on having them have this real short match and then uh, putting Ray over, which just seems odd to me, especially since they've really mismanaged Joe during his time in the company. He was finally kind of getting some steam behind him. And uh, I don't know. It's just uh, it's kind of a mess. And the the other problem with the, the latter match is – there were a whole lot of rumors that Mustafa Ali was going to win that. And Mustafa Ali, of course, got bumped for Mania, and Kofi got that spot. And 
obviously somebody was high on him because at one point they were talking him for Mania versus Daniel Bryan. So somebody's high on him. And to let Brock just walk in and, and pull down that uh, that briefcase, uh, it doesn't. It, I mean, it doesn't do any justice for new new up and coming guys. It kind of leaves Mustafa Ali out in the cold again. And I mean, I think that's why uh, another reason why a lot of people were upset with it because and just... and this guy can work. Like if you go, I, I did watch a little bit of SmackDown, a little bit of Raw. Uh, I did check out some of the highlights of SmackDown, and him and Andrade worked a match on SmackDown that was just great. Yep, like that's, that's I, another uh, like... guy people would love to see kind of get a, a bit of a, a bigger push. And I mean, that's what this Money in the Bank was supposed to be. Yeah, it, it's it's uh you know hey Vince uh let's let's boost ratings. Yep. What do we got? Well, we've got all these stars. No, let's put the briefcase on Brock. Uh, well, you know Brock was the champion and a part time champion the entire time the ratings were slipping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's put it on Brock. That'll that'll boost ratings. All right, yep. and all I right. Mean, and I had a discussion with some just complete WWE Mark who was talking about how. Uh, more about like how many championships they have, you know, um, on the roster and how it not being that many, and uh, said the NXT title didn't count in that due to the fact that um, they're not defended on on Raw or SmackDown. To which I was like, well, how many times did Brock defend the Universal title on Raw or SmackDown? Yeah, that was zero, and he held it for None. the majority of two years. So, so the Universal title doesn't count either, uh, apparently. And I mean, and 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 you know, of course. That was met with like you know name calling and whatnot, <laughs> but I mean, if you look at things like oh, if the titles aren't defended on that program, they don't count. Then that means your top pro title on that program for two years didn't count. Well, we know titles don't count in the WWE, so what's the big deal? They don't matter. Exactly, and that's uh, part of the problem. And uh, the newest title is it was put in for comic relief. It's absolutely. the Vince McMahon Memorial title. Yep. And so I actually have, I actually have, we're going there. Let, let's, uh, let's cut to this video package quick. So what has gone into that discussion about what should we be expecting in the future about the number of champions that we have in all elite wrestling? Well, just watch the WWE product. Shade. At, at this point, titles don't mean anything. And, uh, That's and, a picture of me, Matt, and Nick with a new title. You guys see it? I can't help. Hey, kayfabe back. Kayfabe, bro. So we, we, we want to put prestige back in, in the champions that we have. And uh, we're not going to have no 24-7 belt. <laughs> oh, we're going to have titles that matter. And you know what? If it's the women's champion, that could be a main event. If it's a tag championship match, that could be the main event. <laughs> We want every title to mean like it's the world championship. For, no, I mean, let's be fair. We all love Mick Foley, right? Everyone loves Mick Foley. What a, what a, what a bad... I felt so bad. He's standing out there. He's a living legend. What the fuck was he holding? Like, what? Like, no thought. Well, hey. No thought went into that. Like, what is it? Oh, it's 24-7. So what do you put on it? 24-7. Like, no thought. Just And, and you know what? Here's oh. another thing. Our titles are going to look good. Good I, Lord. I'm I, gonna... I saw a graphic of that, that new title, and I almost threw up. I'm going to get so much heat, and I haven't said a word. Who cares? We don't work for them. <laughs> yeah, well, we can say whatever we want. <laughs> yeah. well, you so know, I felt I really felt bad for Mick. Because you gotta know in your soul, like this, this isn't good. My Twitter mentions are gonna be an absolute disaster. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's why I deleted mine. <laughs> say, well, what, let's come up with something nice, Alex. We'll say something nice about the. T- can we say something nice about the title or? <laughs> It just <laughs> There's got to be something. Is there anything good going on? What's good? You're just being condescending now. No, I'm not being condescending. <laughs> is Randy still working there? Is he still working? This is getting way worse than it needs to be. Let's just move on. Uh, Let's go. Well, hey, guys. I love Randy Orton. He's awesome. So, uh, I, 
uh, before, but yeah, the the twenty four seven title. Let's cover that, and then we'll kind of backtrack a little bit because okay. I do have I do have positives and negatives about the women's matches from Money in the Bank as well. Mm. Uh, the twenty four seven title. Mick Foley comes out, introduces Hardcore Title Light, and it. You know, I don't hate the idea in in the aspect of like it's going to be funny and they put it on the right guy to make it funny truth is hilarious yeah absolutely and he's that's the other thing like truth's a great worker yeah. but he's comedy and he's kind of accepted that and he's amazing at it and he gets over with it so it's going to be hilarious yeah but this this is the vince this is what vince wants his titles to be he wants comic relief it's fart jokes and 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 you know potty humor and, you and know, that's what i've yeah. i would argue in this point um you know the last couple of days of i don't want more backstage segments like if if this was introduced and i thought for a minute that this meant all the backstage segments would be focus of um directly on the 24 7 championship and that meant we would get the IC and the U.S. title and the tag titles and the women's titles and the the world and U.S. or universal titles all you know less backstage and more in ring action. I would be fine with it, but that's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is they're just going to add more backstage slapstick, and it's going to take more time away. Like we haven't seen, we didn't see the women's titles defended. Um, we've had pay per views in the last year where the U.S. or IC title didn't make it on the card. Um, you know, they, they have so many belts, they can't get them all into their pay-per-view already, and then they introduce another title f- with more backstage stuff, and, I mean, we just, like we just said, that Rey Mysterio and Samoa Joe match wasn't nearly long enough, and next pay-per-view, it'll probably be, sh- you know, whatever match uh, Ray has will probably be shorter because they gotta, s- you know, fit in, you know, five minutes of slapstick, and that's gotta come from somewhere, right? Yeah, it's gonna and it's gonna come from talented in ring work because they're not gonna take the promos or the video packages away. Absolutely. That would just be stupid. Um, to back it up a little bit, Bob, uh, because we are kind of on Raw now and what happened with Raw, but I, I do want to talk about the women's title, uh, Becky, and and the way that played out. Mm-hmm. Overall, I I like the direction they're going in the storyline. You can't have her carry both of those belts long term because of the shows. I mean, you could, but that's a lot of work to put on somebody, mm. especially when you know you're, you're you've had creative really be dampened by injuries. So. A great way to do that, and and they didn't just put it back on Charlotte or just give it to Lacey Evans. You know, they used Charlotte as a you know twenty second transitional champion, and, a couple minute transitional champion to put it on part, Bailey. And that's the only part I didn't like. I'm like, I don't. Charlotte has enough title um, reigns in the books, and enough title reigns that are short in the books. There was no reason like they could have put well, they could have put one of the belts on. Lacey Evans and have her be the short term champion. They could have had Bailey win it directly off of um Becky, but like no, there was no I'm reason a, I, for I mean, if she would have won it directly off Becky, it would have it would have gave Bailey even more of a rub. But I'm, to I'm have gonna, it go I'm gonna on disagree Charlotte Bob. again. Well, Charlotte's getting to the point where she's like she's gonna have like John Cena or Hulk Hogan reigns. You're gonna see yeah. all these like really short, like oh, he won the belt, and then you know you're gonna see this kind of thing where they they uh, the won the belt for a night, and you know you don't need that. You you need or for an hour or whatever. Like you don't you don't need these short title reigns that don't do anything. We're back to like it doesn't help the belt. Um, you know it doesn't help. It didn't help Bailey. Like Bailey didn't get one up on the champ, the the double champ, where like, oh well she she used okay. you know what she needed and got one up on the double champ. Instead so, she got one up on Charlotte. So here here's the issue, Bob. Um Becky is so over, you don't and Bailey Bailey it I don't know if Bailey would work as a heel. I mean eventually maybe the character would have to be completely it would have to be a a Hulk Hogan esque flip, right? Like he would, she would have to become like the female version of Hollywood Ill Hogan. Like she would have to drastically alter that character. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not ready to see that. I, I think there's, and I know it seems like a lot of other fans aren't ready to see that. 
there's still a lot more to cheer Bailey for. Okay. So you don't want to put her opposite Becky because Becky is the fan favorite, right? Yeah. Like, so it doesn't hurt Charlotte. It really doesn't at this point. It doesn't hurt her to win the title, knock herself out and lose the title on a cash in to Bailey, it sets up, okay, you know, you've got that feud going uh, and and you can set up other feuds, no problem, right? And if, this is a big if, you got to let Bailey hold this title for a while, okay? And now you have to keep it away from Charlotte for for a while. Have Bailey beat Charlotte clean in some sort of rematch and just move on. Yes, I, I will agree with you there. But this is the way... Yeah, would 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 Bailey beating Becky been a better rub? Yes. But then you have to navigate the idea of Becky losing. Nobody wants Becky to lose. Okay. She so, lost to Charlotte though. So she did lose. Yeah, but in in again, you don't you don't want when you have two faces going, you know, that's not a good rub unless you're turning your heel. Dude, they, you're not turning, they did it already. You're, you're with not, money in the not, bank. They've done this. I'm, I'm talking, you're not turning Bailey heel. Yeah. You're not turning Bailey heel, right? So you can, you can have Charlotte and Lacey Evans, the two heels, screw Becky. Becky can take the loss. It puts heat on Charlotte. It put puts heat on Lacey. Look, Vince is not going to let Lacey Evans lose. Like, this is his pet project. We've all heard this. That's not going to happen. Whether it should or should not is another discussion. It's not going to happen. Not right now, uh, except to Becky, because that's who she's going to take that belt off of. She's going to lose to Becky. Okay, she's got to come up. Okay, she comes back. They keep the feud going. Becky's going to drop that belt to Lacey, and Lacey's going to have like a – a Roman Reigns run. Just watch. It's coming. They okay. Could, they could have just done the Money in the Bank cash in similar to the way they did it with RVD and John Cena. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I don't have. Let, let Charlotte be the one who cost Becky, but let Bailey beat back, get the pin on Becky. So Becky beat Charlotte in the match and is wiped out. No, Charlotte's heading that, backstage. Yes. Bailey comes out. Mm. Charlotte I, I clocks was, Becky on the outside. The wrong time. I think it gives Bailey the wrong kind of rub and the wrong kind of heat. I don't like it. I like Bailey coming out and, and saving Becky. I think that get, gets her more over as a face. The one thing I really didn't, and, and I think people are getting so hung up on this like number with Charlotte. It's like, yeah, look, like there's there's a million belts. That's what we're talking about. There's a million belts. Um, reigns are short. Everybody's got like 9 million title reigns. It doesn't matter anymore. The yeah. WWE doesn't care. This was an efficient way to get the belts where they needed to be on people that, you know, the fans can cheer for as a face. It sets up longer feuds. My only issue with the whole thing was after Bailey came out and made the save, Charlotte was knocked out. It took her too long to cash in the briefcase. Yeah. She should have been... She should have been more of an opportunist because so, even though even though it's believable, like she's like the good person and doesn't she's not really an opportunist. Like anybody in that position would, you know, maybe it takes her it, it takes her more than like hey five seconds. She's got to think about it, but it was way too prolonged it's in my opinion. Almost like it was written for her to beat Becky. So she had to think about it because she's a face in it with another face. And so it took a few minutes to make a decision. And then it was changed later to be Charlotte winning and her doing it to Charlotte and oh, nobody changed the finish. Because that's what it seems like. I mean, that is exactly what a face would do to a face. I mean, that's speculation, but I, I don't know. But what I watched, that was my one criticism i was like well look just cash it in already don't you don't have to sell this long you don't have to play it up this long just cash it in nobody's gonna no, you know nobody's gonna hate you for pinning charlotte all all you know? i kept thinking is i'm like all right if this was becky this would make sense this is charlotte who's been like you know screwing over everybody and has turned on all her friends numerous times and like i'm like she's like the uber heel of the women's division um why is this taking forever the they're they're you know one's a face one's a heel this is obvious like it really felt like it was a situation where this was written for uh, a face to go cash in on a face and then a last minute change you know 
did something. But uh, you know, report came out. Report came out that uh, when they started Raw this week, they didn't have a script finished. So I mean, who knows? That, well, <laughs> really, that's not surprising. But I, the, the other the other highlight, in my opinion, of um, Money in the Bank, besides the men's match up till the last two minutes. Um, was the fact that we now have the Roman Reigns Elias meme. Yeah. Oh, I love the Roman Reigns Elias meme. Uh, and probably my favorite one is uh, Roman Reigns walking down the hallway, and it says, uh, uh, good booking, and Elias sneaking up behind him with the guitar, and it says Vince McMahon. Yeah. And it's just, I was like, that. Uh, okay, yeah. that, that made my night. So, um, yeah, I mean... Uh, which it's fine you know that's that's a very squashy thing Mm -hmm. hey guys like roman's not fighting for the title yet this is kind of what we all wanted Mm -hmm. he squashed elias okay like that's what he should do um this is good let's give let's give people who want elias to win and i i just i don't know i don't get elias and maybe i'm just the only person who doesn't understand why he's popular like I just he's got a catchphrase. Catchphrase is get get over to he, nowadays. Yeah, he's got a catchphrase, but he doesn't. I mean, he's a heel character who should be getting booed. The things he says about cities, but people love him, and he is consistently losing. He is always on the losing end. He doesn't win I've matches. Never seen Elias win a match. I'm like, I, I'm sure he has, but yeah, I've never seen I, it. I can't. I can't think of it. I mean, I know he has one somewhere but i can't think of it like even on wrestlemania he doesn't even get a match he just comes out and he still gets squashed yeah he so, just gets I mean, squashed by it yeah yeah i i don't know but the meme the meme thankfully we have the meme now so um i yeah like they really they took a meh pay-per-view that had a lot of issues and a lot of it had a lot of bright spots but it because of the ref issues and the booking issues Eh, it was eh, and then in the last two minutes, we you know we got WCW 2000 again, and it it's Crash TV. We're in Crash TV mode. Um, this is like Vince Russo's wet dream, except there's not as much TNA because we're in the PG era. Yeah. Did um, you but, uh, did you see that? Did you see Vince Russo came out and said Raw was really good and on the right track? Did you catch that? Yeah, I did not, but this is not this is not you know, Bob, we were talking and I, I think we should relay it like this since uh the Lesnar the Lesnar briefcase. So my my girlfriend uh is a casual fan. She watches the product occasionally, okay? And we were talking about money in the bank after I'd watched it, and uh, she's like, Oh, you watched it. She knows I've been really critical of the product. And I was like, Yeah, yeah, I watched it. <laughs> And I, I was kind of talking her through the Money in the Bank ladder match. You know, she's like, oh, who was in it? And we, you know, named off the people who were in it. And I kind of told her, you know, yeah, so it was supposed to be Braun Strowman and Sami Zayn. And then he got wrecked. So only seven guys come out to the ring. And I was like, so there's a run in in the last, like, two minutes of the match. Who do you think ran in? And she kind of pauses for a second. She's like, Brock Lesnar. Right. And she said it very sarcastically. And I was like, I was like, did you like see this? And she's like, wait a second. What? It was really Brock Lesnar. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, okay. Cause I just thought of the dumbest thing I could think of and said it. And I was like, that's the casual fan. She's the prototypical. She watches an occasional raw and probably six pay-per-views a year. <laughs> it's that the dumbest thing she could think of. Was Brock Lesnar running in? Mm-hmm. And that's, I was like, well, apparently you and Vince both love it. Yeah. So, it's like, no, I hate it. I'm like, hey, well, Vince loves it. I don't know. Yeah. And I mean, and that's your, that's your casual fans response, you know, and that's, man. Um, if we also posted on, uh, on Twitter this week, uh, after Monday night. Um, Jordan, who's been on the show uh, here with me, he's done uh, StarCast and we did uh, G1 and whatnot, and he does the unboxing videos with me. Um, you know, he's 15 and he watches a lot of Ring of Honor in New Japan. He watches WWE, you know, when there's a pay per view um, from time to time. You know, we watch Mania, we watch the big ones uh, together. So he knows who all the players are and stuff. And uh, when I, I brought up the, uh, I wanted to tell him about the 24 7 title. 
as somebody who's only been watching WWE for maybe five years or so and, and doesn't really remember the hardcore title except for, you know, a little bit of video he's seen in past WrestleManias. Um, so so I, I, you know, record that while talking to him about the 24-7 championship, and I told him about it. You know, that Mick Foley came out with going to introduce a new title, and he was like, "Ooh, that's interesting! Like, what was it?" You know, and he seemed a little bit excited. And then I told him what it was, and he like laughed out loud. Um, <laughs> he he he's like, "Why?" And I'm like, "Well, I, I think they think that this will make it more exciting." And uh, you know, there were th- like three title changes right away, so you know, there's there is some merit to that. And and he's like, he's like, that that's the dumbest thing I ever heard of. Well, that's so stupid. <laughs> and he just couldn't believe that that was something that WB had and he was like what are they going to have him like lose it in a grocery store or like at their hotel or something like w- why are they have a 24 7 title like is somebody going to get attacked in their hotel room and i'm like yeah that's probably yeah. something that's going to happen i'm like you know because he doesn't he didn't watch the attitude era when people were getting pinned like at the concession stand and stuff so he doesn't remember that stuff and this the the concept to him is so foreign that he was like this just sounds like the most ridiculous thing ever and he's out there giggling on camera uh when when discussing it so you know that's your that's your average fan that's your fan that doesn't watch every single week that's somebody who is younger who didn't live through the attitude era this is like the demographic they're going after the the like you know 10 to you know 10 to 18 year olds right i mean i just i don't know i'm uh, everybody who lived through the attitude era seems to think this is like hilarious and fantastic it's, but it's trash like it's yeah. and and the belt looks like trash yep and did you okay i'm i'm sure you didn't see them so waffle house Yes, asked, I did. Yeah, <laughs> asked who stole their sign, and Wendy said that they plan on being the first restaurant to win the twenty four seven championship. Um, Wendy's Twitter, Twitter game is is a plus. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I tweeted back at them hashtag one belt Wendy. Yeah. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So that like yeah, we get the twenty four seven title, and I'm sure it's gonna lead to some laughs, but it's gonna ruin so many other things and take time away from stuff they already don't have time to to book for and it's like man like raw started off with that 20 minute long promo and not even paul Heyman could save that segment man Mm -hmm. and that was another thing monday night and and like when lesnar came out on sunday there was a pop but it was it was more of a groan and then the crowd the there crowd is, went dead. There is fan footage of that, like the fan who posted from their seats, you know, uh, Brock coming down, climbing the ladder, br- taking down the briefcase. So you get to hear what is going around in the fans. The fans around him are all booing. Like you can, you can, you hear kind of like a, a groan and you hear a couple people like, yay. And then a bunch of boos and but they weren't like it wasn't like a, a group of boos where like oh they, they're supposed to boo so they're booing now it was like you know one person like boo and then someone else like boo and someone's like i can't believe this someone's like boo you know very very disjointed and i, I mean and that's really where you see, hear it i mean wwe fiddles with their audio so often you never know what, if you're getting a real um reaction but from the sounds of the people in the in the audience, there was a lot of people who were either just you know booing or just silent because they just had no time for it. Well, look, um, it it sounded like an a groan and then some boos, and then I think people were like, "Is this really going to happen?" Mm-hmm. He climbs the ladder and he took the briefcase, and there was kind of another round of eh, boos and. Michael Cole even is like this. The audience is shocked in silence, or what? It said something like that. Well, how they were stunned, mm-hmm. and I was like, "No, you can look at the audience. They're leaving. They and, don't care. You know, this that... is not a stunned because they didn't show. This wasn't. You didn't get a lot of guys with the you know the uh, Undertaker or whatever, like the the big eyes and the uh, the the. No, people just didn't care, and. Monday night he came out and it came, he came out to a smattering of booze and Paul started his promo and got a smattering of booze and and that was it like uh, Brock had, Brock has a 
Brock has go away heat. Yeah. Like Brock, nobody wants to see Brock anymore. Well, and that's because that's partially Brock's own doing. And it's the WWE's doing, uh, you know, that's what happens when you're like, if Brock was coming back as a part-timer and working six good matches a year mm -hmm. against high caliber opponents, it wasn't in, uh, wasn't in the title picture yeah. and Brock was motivated. Like, like, look, man, Brock is, Brock is a great wrestler. Brock is crazy talented and he's an attraction, but he's got to be there and he's got to want to be there. That's the one positive I've seen is when he came out Monday night, that was the first time it looked like Brock Lesnar wanted to be there in five years. Well, he at least looked like he was engaged. If he's not going to be there for raw and or SmackDown uh, the majority of the time. It defeats the purpose of the Money in the Bank briefcase. The whole point of having that briefcase is that any moment that guy can come out and take it off somebody. And if Brock only shows up when advertised or only shows up, you know, a couple times a year and you know, you know, you hear from the dirt sheets, you know, what his his appearance dates are like, then you're like, well, he's not going to show up at SmackDown in, you know, BFE, he's not, you know, he, they're going to, they're going to have him show up and cash in at a, at a bigger venue or at a bigger city or in a, a larger market or whatever. He's not going to show up to one of the towns that don't have, you know, a big airport that he can just fly in and go right to the arena. You know, if he's got to drive there, he's probably not going to be there. Um, so, so you can look at that stuff and then that, that hurts it because if it was on somebody who's there every week and is seen on TV every week, um, any any time, like any time, they could cash that in. You, you never really know because you know they're there, you know the briefcase is there, and you never really know if they're going to cash in that night or not. I guess, I guess their solution to that is they're going to have Heyman just come out with the briefcase and like tease like Lesnar might be there because that's what happened Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, but how, how that's going to get old quick. That's just, Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it was kind of old. Like they did it once. Now... Yep. I mean, you can maybe do it one more time in a few weeks, but I think that's what we're going to be seeing for who knows how long. Yeah. So, yeah, man, like we we just it's ironic that we did the show, the comparison show between WCW 2000 and uh, and WWE today, because it, now we feel like we're in the heart of it. This yep. this feels like Jeff Jarrett coming out and laying down for Hulk Hogan. This feels like it feels like you know, crash TV, Vince Russo, Ed Ferrara booking it, 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 it's okay. We need something else. Let's add a title. WCW yep. added the hardcore title in 99 mm -hmm. and but, you know, because they didn't know what else to do. Just but, throw another title at it. And, and remember, uh, what, uh, end of 2000 start 2001 in that time frame, uh, is when they added the cruiserweight tag team titles. Cause they had, Oh, we got all these cruiserweights here. Why don't, why don't we do a cruiserweight tag team title? Cause we have a huge roster with guys who really aren't getting used. Let's, uh, let's do a cruiserweight tag team titles. Um, you know, so that's very similar to saying, oh, we got a huge roster of undercard guys who aren't being used. Let's come up with a 24 seven title. Um, you know, it, it's not too far, uh, away from between the two of them. Yeah. It, it, it's really a shame. Uh, but Hey, uh, you know, a couple of bright spots, at least in my opinion, uh, WWE is again, receiving pushback on, on wrestlers that, uh, will not be attending, uh, the Saudi Arabia show for various yeah. reasons. Daniel Bryan has said no again. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Owens has said no. Uh, Sami Zayn uh, not being allowed to go yeah. uh, because of his uh, uh, Syrian ancestry. And, uh, you know, Bob, uh, they, they released, WWE released kind of a trash statement yeah. about, about, the the super superstars not not actually being or choosing not to go or not being allowed to go more specifically and it, it reads quote wwe is committed to embracing individuals from all backgrounds while respecting local customs and cultural differences from around the world all right we're not monetized and i'm glad we're not monetized because fuck wwe yeah. Like, this is some bullshit. This is, they just need to be honest. 
We want the fucking check. They're paying us too much money. We don't give a fuck. Yep. All right? Like, I, 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 like, just be honest about it. Cultural differences? Okay. Um, yeah. Don't ever, ever, and I mean ever, expect me to buy your crap campaigns and your hey we're we're supporting equality and women and uh, the women's revolution it's all shit stephanie Mc- it- stephanie Greg man decided to tweet about mental health and how important mental health is and we need to you know look out for mental health during mental health month to which numerous fans replied with things such as yeah, you should think about how the mental health are for people of, you know, uh, uh, you know, females who live in Saudi Arabia and uh, have to worry about, you know, being murdered. And people were like, yeah, you should think about the mental health about the LGBTQ community who lives in Saudi Arabia. Or you should think about the mental health of all your wrestlers who don't have insurance. I'm like, they're, they're, I mean, if you're, you're worried about mental health, what about the wrestlers on your roster who can't get mental health uh handled you know and can't get any help because they don't have insurance to do so because you don't provide it like i mean we can we can push back against you know these kind of things because it's obviously all uh just publicity in fact um famously wwe had been caught saying as much uh stephanie mcmahon in a previous interview said that uh today uh promoting your product is done more through philanthropy than it is done through advertising now when you come out and say something like that and then act the way that they have it just proves the point that they don't care about these causes they simply are using it as a way to promote their product and try to get into other forms of media to have them say oh look how many good things wwe is doing yeah look i i'm happy I'm happy that the WWE does all the Make-A-Wish stuff. Mm -hmm. Not for the WWE, but for the kids who get to do it, right? Like, I mean, that's awesome that the kids get to have these Make-A-Wishes. But let's, you know, let's not give WWE any kind of credit for that. Uh, They, uh, it was discussed a few years ago, now at this point, that WWE used to do Mm Make-A-Wish, and it was never publicized, that's when you give credit when something like that breaks naturally and you find out like, you know, WWE wrestlers are doing make a wishes that, you know, and they're not putting out press releases or anything that is called, you know, really standing up for something and believing in something. And, and, and now it's become this, you know, John Cena has done his X amount of make a wish and, and yep. you give credit, got to give credit to the wrestlers because, you know, I, I, I want to believe that the wrestlers are actually doing it because they're good people, mm-hmm. right? They're, they're, they're doing it because it's the right thing to do, and they can make these kids who are their fans, you know, bring a little bit of joy to their life, right? But, look, the WWE, everything they do that is all this publicity-driven, the Susan G. Komen crap and, you know, all the Make-A-Wish crap, and the, let's not act like the, the Finn Balor, you know, Balor Club for everyone wasn't just a cheap tool to try and get money mm-hmm. from people because, oh, look, WWE so progressive. Yeah. yeah, Balor Club should be for everyone. That's freaking great, okay? That's awesome. But let's let's not act like WWE isn't doing these things purely for publicity. Let's not act like they're they're going over to a place where the ha- like a very large portion of their roster can't go and perform because of the genitals they happen to have. Yep. Okay? Like that's that's the law over there. Okay? Where you know you can be beaten and you know, whipped and and whatnot for for wearing the incorrect clothes or going out without being with a close male relative. Fuck Saudi Arabia. Fuck the WWE and their stupid Saudi shows. It's fucking blood money. All right, mm-hmm. let's just be honest. Take the money if you're going to, but don't bullshit me. Yep. That's all I'm saying. Don't try to sugarcoat it. Okay. Kudos to the guys who are all standing up. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, 
I'm sorry, uh, the, the list got updated earlier today, and the last one I saw was Daniel Bryan, uh, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Aleister Black, all not going. So uh, kudos. The majority of them are heels. Like, that, that's <laughs> like all these guys who, uh, I mean, the guy I don't understand, I don't know why AJ keeps agreeing to go. Like, this is a guy who's talked openly about his Christianity and about how important his morals are to him, and yet he, he keeps going. Um, you know, and he just got a, a new contract, and obviously top guys like Daniel Bryan uh, can get away with not going. Um, so you would think AJ would be able to as well. I just I don't understand why he is I, willing to go over there. I, I would be interesting to hear his answer because I, I did. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I have heard some. There is... There is an appropriate, I feel there is an appropriate answer. If you say, hey, I'm going to go because maybe I'll get to, maybe I'll get to show somebody, you know, that they can do something or I can have a conversation that maybe will, you know, build bridges. There's something to that from the wrestlers. Like maybe, maybe that's how AJ, again, all speculation. Maybe that's how he really feels. Um, maybe somebody's not just socially involved. Look, let's be honest. There are a lot of people who just don't care well, or don't or don't understand how bad it is. There, uh, look, the the American public in general uh, is is fairly disinterested in in foreign affairs and misinformed okay like and i'm not this isn't i'm not saying liberals conservatives i don't even want to turn it into because we've had a couple of those i'm saying like really we've got people like i have friends i have close friends people i really like that don't even understand how like our government functions on a basic level Uh, let alone the things that happen overseas okay and i don't say that as like to be a dick but i've had conversations with him uh, another example um uh my girlfriend's parents are in their 60s right and her mom really doesn't doesn't understand how like the supreme court and congress and the the president like how they work like really at all She has like no understanding of it. And and, like, she's made comments. She's like, well, this is just going to happen. And this is why it's like, that's not how that's not. And it's not like minutia. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not saying, but like understanding that like, okay, the, the branches of government are all equal. They all have different responsibilities. Um, the Supreme court doesn't write laws they interpret laws that are written Mm -hmm. and that was kind of the conversation she's like well the supreme court's just gonna make a law and i was like yeah wait what and and she really believed that the supreme court could like write law and i was like okay and and she's not an uneducated person she's a nurse and like you know she's she's just misinformed Mm -hmm. and doesn't know and 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 Let's not act like this is a minority. This is a very large chunk of people. Mm -hmm. So to assume that the WWE roster is all completely informed about Saudi Arabia, maybe, maybe we're, uh, we're, we're assuming a little much too. Yeah. I mean, uh, my, my mother's same thing tonight. I was actually pretty shocked because, uh, my kids studying, uh, uh, president Gerald R. Ford in school and she was able to like help him with his home his homework and she was like spouting off like what number president he was what years he was he had terms for you know uh telling him about like his history and like the military and stuff and i'm like she knows all this stuff off the top of her head but you know just last week we had an argument about uh her stance on you know some new abortion laws and her her belief that Planned Parenthood was being funded by the Democrats through Senate and I'm like that's not how that's not how Senate works and there's a law against that and like there's so many things you don't understand of how this works but so uh, well yeah. and, and again that's <laughs> that I'm talking like that's getting down into like uh, you know, actual uh, the the further down you get into a subject, mm. the and the more detailed you get, uh, you know, the less people typically understand unless they really study it. But you know, I I just assumed everybody like understood like 
uh, you know, kind of how the Constitution works and kind of yeah. how our government works, at least because we all had to go through you know, government and, and history in high school, right? Like, well, I don't, I, I, I don't that, think they did back uh, in like the the seventies and maybe even well, early eighties. Like, they had like civics classes and stuff, you know. Like, I mean, this is not, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's not, it's not really a stretch, right? And people, look, Bob, you know, we're we're on the cusp. We're like, you know, we're that generation between Gen X and millennials and, and, you know, our generation really, you know, when we were younger, didn't vote like our parents' generation and our grandparents' generation were way more politically active when they were younger. Uh, so I I don't know. I I don't want to, it's turning into a whole nother podcast, but (laughs) but it is like, like maybe some of it is just, a lack of information or a different perception. And I'm, I'm at least willing to, to listen to an individual when they tell me, uh, you know, Hey, this is my reason for going. Maybe they do have a reason. They have a different outlook on what they're trying to accomplish. But when the WWE as a company dances around this issue, and that's what they did. Cause last time it was Khashoggi, and they were like, Ooh, we're monitoring the situation. Uh-huh. We're monitoring this big fat $40 million check going in our profit margin. Yep. That's what they were doing. All right. Same thing here. Uh, they're, they're taking the payday and they're saying, well, it's just so what if they murder their own citizens and yeah. beat the women and, 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 well, but it's $40 million guys. Mm-hmm. And, and, and to be fair, like, we don't know what the bonuses are for going over there. Like, you know, apparently, and this kind of came out out a few weeks ago, you know, Mick Foley said he would be willing to consider coming out of retirement Uh, to do a match over there. And uh, the only thing I can think of is, you know, did they dangle like a million dollar payday in front of Mick? I would assume it'd have to be a lot. Like having, having met Mick Foley a couple years ago, at his comedy show when he came to town and having stood in line to, to, to actually get to meet him and get an autograph and seeing how much pain he was in 30 minutes into that autograph session, uh, sitting in a chair, just sitting in a steel chair behind a table. And he was in so much, ag- you know, aggravated pain from his years and years of bumps um, and was in need of surgeries, which he's since had. Uh, I, I just, I couldn't imagine somebody being willing after having hip replacement surgery and having all these surgeries to be able to get back to a point where they can move around and sit down comfortably, be willing to go through that kind of, uh, take bumps and go back in the ring again, unless there was a huge payday involved. That, like, I just couldn't imagine it. I, I, yeah, but Bob, like, what if they tell you, Hey, 14 minute hell in the cell match would take her for half a million dollars. Yeah, a, a half a million saying. dollars, a, a half a million dollars is hard to turn down for 40, yeah. four, 14 minutes of work, especially in a in a uh, in something like Hell in the Cell or a cage where you can let the cage do a lot of the work, mm-hmm. um, and and with a guy like I, I'm just throwing you know postulating a theory because that yeah. was kind of one of the one of the rumors that was coming out of Saudi is they wanted mankind undertaker hell in a cell, you know, cause we've all heard the, the Saudis. That's why we get all the old guys going to go into Saudi Arabia. They want to see all the old guys. They want that. Cause there's, you know, they want to see all the legends, quote unquote legends. Mm-hmm. So if you're offering these guys just huge paydays for 15 minutes of work, you know, I, I don't like, I'm saying fuck the WWE, fuck Saudi Arabia. Look, if 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 they offered me, if I was a wrestler and they offered me a six figure payday to go, um, and I was not, you know, John Cena set, that'd be. Let's yeah. be honest. That's it's hard to turn down, man. Like yep. I, so I don't want to be super critical about the guys either because yeah. you know the boys need to make their money. The boys need to make their money. Uh, it does it suck. Yeah, like, I mean, it's a bad situation. Um, but, the, like, the WWE, and you know what? If they were just honest about it and, like, yeah, we're going for the payday, man. It's a lot of money to turn down. I'd be like, well, at least they're honest. Yeah. 
you know, at least you know what you're getting into. You're go, you're going for the payday. But yeah, like there are guys who, and maybe that's it. Maybe because AJ, it came out, you know, in the last 24 hours. AJ said he this is his last wrestling contract. Mm-hmm. He signed a five year deal in March, and when this is done, he's done. He's retiring. Yeah. He he wants to end his career in the WWE. Um, and I would imagine he is trying to build a nest egg for his retirement. And, uh, you know, I'm sure AJ has done well over the years, but you know, AJ, this is AJ's big money run. This is AJ's big money run in the WWE, you know, the last two years. And then this contract, you know, maybe they're offering him, you know, 50, 75,000 to go over there. That's again, that's, that's more than. That's more than most people make in a year. Yeah. I mean, that's hard to turn down that kind of money, even when you're rich, man. So, I mean, and I mean, just, I'm not, I'm not yeah. begging on AJ. He is uh, one of the reasons I still watch WWE. Well, no, and, just, and I'm not trying know, to bag on him either. Yeah. I'm not trying to, but you brought him up as an example yeah. of you don't understand why he's going when other guys like Brian and Cena. I just and, would like to hear yeah. him, you know, speak on the subject. You know, yeah, um, I, I wish more people would raise you know, kind of raise that. And maybe you do, uh, you know, uh, as, as we kind of, I think we should kind of wind down and, and, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're going to be talking, I have a feeling Bob, you and I are going to be talking a lot more about AEW in the very near future yep. because I, uh, you know, I'm glad there's going to be an alternative. Yeah. Do I want the WWE to be successful? Yes. I want to I want to be able to enjoy the WWE again, but it's just so far away. It's yeah. just there there's little parts I enjoy, but it's as a an overall product I I feel like I'm just I'm torturing myself. Yeah, and I mean as we seen that video earlier, the same day uh WWE introduced that 24/7 championship uh Nick Jackson says on being the elite that they're only going to have a couple belts because they don't want them to be devalued and having too many, you know, hurts the product. And so it, it definitely seems that we are going to, it's going to be an alternative um, from everything we've heard. Uh, every time, you know, those guys talk about the company and what they look to be doing going forward, it definitely sounds different than what WWE is uh, providing. And, you know, in, in my uh, opinion, that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I will know a little bit more uh, after this weekend, I'm sure. Like, uh, I think this is going to give us a sneak peek into what to expect. AEW's first official show and and kind of a little insight into the direction that the company is going to go and some of the things we're going to see. I don't think this is going to be a finished product, but I think we're going to have a lot to talk about. So, yep. Bob, uh, you, you got anything else? I do want to say that... Um, you'll pop up here in a minute, uh, for everybody who's watching, you'll have a link to our AEW, uh, double or nothing and Starcast video, uh, will pop up here in a second. You guys can click on that to, uh, view that, uh, video and, uh, you know, take, uh, take a time to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, um, and, uh, Twitch. Uh, all those are smart down radio and, you know, we'd, we'd love to see you guys there and, and have that interaction. And uh, besides that, man, um, I just you know, put that uh, put that bell icon in a headlock, man, and just just squeeze, squeeze that bell, man. Squeeze, yeah, like, squeeze the bell, like, like squeeze it, squeeze the bell, squeeze yeah. the bell, so that you're notified anytime we 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 post some content, and uh, we we do appreciate the support. With with that, Bob, uh, uh, I think we should uh, kind of wrap up and and move on, and 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 uh, we can we can uh, cash cash in our our briefcase on the uh, on the outro here. Absolutely, thanks for joining us, everybody, and uh, have a good uh, weekend. Too sweet.